Why, hello there. My name is Dr. Stevens, Dr. Ross Stevens, MD of plastic surgery. <laughs> well, today I have just one question for you all. How's your quarantine going? No, really. Yeah? That's what I thought. Because most of you, you're survivors. In fact, a few of you are right on my list here. That's what I'm talking about. Either most of you are doing some exercises, getting caught up on long lost projects, or going the other way, slamming your face with Oreos, vodka, Cheetos, well, and cheesy stuffed crust pizzas. Well, which brings me to the point of the COVID-15. Pounds, that is. That's where I come in. You see, I'm a doc on the front lines of this crisis, but of a different stripe. I deal with liposuctions, tummy tucks, and cool sculpting. <laughs> but for others, it's not going that well. All we have to do is look at, well, <laughs> bareback Bobby and uh, naked Sue from the top up, right? <laughs> not to mention that coffee drinks in the morning with that Matthias. They're doing okay. Well, they're not half as bad as my brother, Jim Stevens. Do some of you know him? Uh, from the 1976 Conk C Team Basketball Championship. He was the MVP. He was a coach over there at the high school until a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and he was a member of the Noontime Rotary because he couldn't get up for the sunrise, basically. He's gone into a downward spiral. Why, you ask? Well, he last mentioned to me by Ham Radio two weeks ago that the Fringe Theater had stopped producing. And, well, for a little while the live streams went quite well, but after that it just didn't seem to do anything for him. So, well, he's doing his part to crush the curve. Well, at least his curve, anyway. But no more talk right now. Why don't we all up? Uh, have a look here. Or yesterday, he went to the grocery store and, well, he thought he was gonna go ahead and figure something out. Hey, I want to talk to you about life. Huh? It's just too difficult to be alive, isn't it? Hmm? When try to function? Uh, I tried to buy a can of tuna fish in the supermarket, but there was this poison standing right in front of where I wanted to reach out and grab the tuna fish. <laughs> so I waited a while, right, to see if they'd move, and they didn't. <laughs> they was looking at tuna fish, too, but they was taking a, a real long time on it, eh? reading the ingredients on each can. Like there was a book. A pretty boring book, if you ask me. <laughs> but nobody has. So, I waited a while to see if they'd move. Well, and then I thought about asking them. I couldn't get to the tuna fish. But then I had this awful fear that it would do no good. Eh? No good at all to ask them, right? They'd probably say something like, We'll move when we're goddamn ready. You nagging little bitch! <laughs> and then what would I do? So, then I actually started to cry out of frustration. <laughs> Quietly, so as not to disturb anyone. And still, even though I was softly sobbing, this person didn't grasp that I needed to get by them. So, that's when I took my hand out with my fist and I brought it down real hard in his head. <laughs> and the poison fell to the ground and looked totally startled, right? And then some child nearby started to cry and, and I was still crying. And, well, I couldn't imagine making use of the tuna fish now anyways, right? I mean, so I shouted to the child to stop crying. I mean, it was drawing too much attention to me. So, then, I ran out of the supermarket, and I thought, I'll take a taxi to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I need to be surrounded with culture right now, not tuna fish. <laughs> well, I think as you all see there, it's 
time for an intervention for my brother. I don't think he has any more coaching days left in him with that kind of behavior. I'm going to go help him as much as I can. And as for all of you, y'all take care and be good to one another. All right? Hey, and come and see me down at Truman Square. I'll give you a great deal. <laughs> y'all take care.